Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Something a little bit different to try today, something I've never tried before. You might have heard of the ghost painting trend. <laughs> so I'm doing this as a little mini collaboration with my friend Zoe Hart, who is Zoe Hartist here on YouTube. Um, and it was her that came up with the idea and I said oh we could do it as a little little collab if you like so she said yeah let's do it um so at the end of this video I'm going to be joining up with with Tom's help <laughs> Zoe and I are going to join up and share our screens and show each other what we've come up with so the ghost paint, tra painting trend if you haven't heard of it is where you take um an old print or something that you've bought in a charity shop or you found in a junk shop or something or you know you might have stashed away in your attic something that you know you maybe wouldn't want to hang on on your wall just as it is and you add a little painted ghost to it i'll show you the one i've got hold of in a minute it was harder than i thought to find something appropriate and i wonder if there's lots of other people in our local charity shops doing the same thing i don't know i mean we are coming up to halloween let me just show you, I'll share my screen and just show you a few images of things that other people have done. That's the best way to show you what I'm talking about. So here we go. You can see this one here that it's just, it's an old print that someone's taken and they've just added this ghost into it. Here's another one. <laughs> so they're quite, they're not realistic ghosts or anything. They're quite comical little ghosts. It's just a bit of fun, really. You can see the kind of thing. <laughs> this one. This one's actually blushing because <laughs> it's been caught on the toilet. Lots of different uh, different takes on the idea, there, but, but the general thing is this little comical little sheet, sheet over the head kind of ghost. These ones have got glasses as well. Maybe I should make mine have glasses so <laughs> it looks like me. <laughs> oh, this is the one they're all picking apples in an orchard. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's kind of what I'm aiming at. I don't want to make this too long, so let's go straight to the desk now and I'll show you the picture that I've got to start with. This is a little, I, I paid £2.50 for it in my local charity shop, which I, I thought was enough for a, for a cheap print, really, to be honest. <laughs> but um, I was getting desperate by this stage. And, and this isn't ideal in some ways because the whole thing is taken out with this, with this little girl and I quite like the little girl image. Um, there's not a lot of room in the background. I could just turn her into a ghost. I do have another idea I think I might try. Um, <laughs> so she's obviously, she's in a, you can't see bluebells because it's a black and white print, but you can, you can actually, you can actually spot them in the background. She's picked this huge bunch of bluebells from the wood. Well, that's disappointing. It was someone trying to sell me a driveway. Wasn't a happy mail at all. <laughs> <sighs> Out of breath, running upstairs now. So where did I get to? So yeah, um, the last prompt in the Artifile Toby list, which is what I'm following for Inktober, and I've fallen way behind, is Happy Halloween. So Zoe and I are going to be putting our little films out on the 31st of October, so I thought it's ideal and I will put, I will replace this with Happy Halloween. And then this will, um, this will go into my Artifile Toby book, I think. What I'm thinking I'm going to do, first thing is to get it out of the frame, and then I think I'm going to just have a couple of ghosts kind of in the background, the little comedy ghosts. And I'm going to do some transparent gesso, I think, over her so that I can then work into her with colour pencils. I might I might do a bit of gesso. I haven't decided quite, but I, I will I will show you what I'm up to as I go along. And I think I'm just going to make her into a... She'll still look like this little girl, but a kind of ghostly version of this little girl. So I'm kind of going away from the sort of the spirit of the, of the trend a little bit spirit so to speak but i will still have the co kind of comedy ghost in the background i'm going to see how that goes if all else fails i'll end up painting over her again and she will be completely a ghost but i just think it's quite a cute little picture i love her little coat and everything and her expression is kind of interesting it's not too cutesy i just quite like the way she it's quite a sort of almost challenging look at the camera there i quite like it so yeah so we'll see where this goes the whole point is just to have fun and get inspired to try something so if i slightly buck the trend i don't really care too much so i'm gonna have to get these out before i can i might as well cut this because i'm not going to be hanging it on the wall yes so i'm going to cut into this take the whole thing apart might save the frame for something else because i think probably this picture will just get stuck into my sketchbook I'm going to carry on and do this. Next time you see me, the print will all be out and ready to start working on. OK, here we are, back again. I've wrestled it out of the frame. It was a little bit of a battle. I had to actually pull all the little uh, 
nails out with a pair of pliers. So let's put that to one side for a minute. I found a piece of board just to use to stick this to while I'm working on it. So I'm going to tape this onto my board and then I'm going to use, I think I'm going to try this. This is this watercolour ground, which I've spent quite a lot of money on it a while back and I've never used it yet. But you're supposed to be able to use it on different surfaces to give you a, a good surface to use watercolours and gouache on. And I wanted to try gouache on this. It might be coloured pencils as well. So primer for working with watercolours on greaseless surfaces like linen canvas, cardboard or wood forms a white elastic film with an even surface because this <laughs> I took this out it's a very flimsy print £2.50 in a charity shop is a bit of a rip-off really <laughs> probably didn't cost that much in the first place it is a lovely image though I'm just going to tape this down I don't think I need to tape it all down because I'm not going to be um, yeah, I'm not going to be painting the whole background or anything. I just it's just a something a bit more solid to work on really. So I'll just leave that will do for now, I think. So I'm going to try that, but I might also need this. I, lo I love this transparent gesso and I particularly like this for when you've done one layer of, of something on a background and then you want to work colored pencils into it. And you can and this gives it a clear coating with a slight grit to it, which is quite nice for using with the color pencils. Um, and it protects your surface underneath but yeah so I might want that as well I might end up using that later so I've got that out handy as well I'm going to try this first and it's the first time I hope I don't ruin my print because I haven't got another one to play with so <laughs> so I think I'll use the same brush I would use for putting Mod Podge and things on with I've tied it up I can't find anything <laughs> there we go I've pulled out way too much look at that I'll have to try and unscrew the top and get that back in the bottle later. So it's wrinkling up a little bit now with the dampness, but hopefully that will settle down once it dries. Maybe I should have put tape all around, I don't know. Feels like it's drying pretty quickly. So here's my, um, my little palette ready. Here's my collection of gouache. I'm not going to need a lot of colours. Um, if I can't make it transparent enough, I'll I'll get my watercolours out as well. I think I'd like for her to have a little red coat. I might try some of the. I've got some of those graphite tint watercolours. I might try some of them in the in the background maybe. But I'm I'm going to leave the little girl looking black and white. Her all the parts where you can see her skin. I'm going to leave black and white, and her hair will be black and white. The ghost will be white in the background. It's pretty much dry already. Dry on the surface anyway, I and mean, then the underneath is probably still a bit damp, so it's still wrinkly. This is crimson red, I wonder if this might be better. Might want grey, we'll definitely want white. Oh, zinc white, I want now. I think zinc white might be one of those that's a little bit too transparent, but I don't know, so let's keep the titanium white out as well. I forgot to make sure there, I've got Arteza, Windsor and Newton designers gouache, and De La Rowney. Aquafine, gosh. Okay. And for that sort of suggestion of, I mean, I could opt for making this quite a brightly coloured wood and, and leave her, except for the coat, black and white, which will make her look more ghost-like. And I might end up using coloured pencils and just making, just spookifying her face a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided about that. Okay, I feel like that's, as dry as it's going to get, I'm a bit, I oh, said this paper is so thin, I'm a bit disappointed it's pretty wibbly still, but I'm hoping if I put it, once I'm done, if I put it under some weight overnight, it will maybe um, flatten out again. So, I've got these Derwent Graphite Tint watercolours. Um, they're a nice range of kind of natural looking colours, um, but without, you know, they're not too bright. And I love the way they kind of granulate and things. They're, they're lovely paints to use. So I'm going to try those. A little oddment to check my colours on. I'm going to need an extra pot of water. I 
Okay, I've just used a little touch of green to just dull that that uh, crimson down. It was a little bit too much. Hopefully now I want it pretty watery. I'm hoping this will now stand up to it because the paper wouldn't I wouldn't have used that kind of paper for watercolor before. So we'll see. I don't want to ruin it now because I haven't got another one to use. Okay, let's let's start here. Can always do another layer, of course, as well. Okay, that's that bit done. I'm quite happy with how that's gone. Um, it's a slightly more sort of cherry red and slightly a slightly cooler red in real life than it looks on camera, but I quite like it the way I quite like it both ways. Um, and I'm really happy with how that watercolour ground has allowed me to put the paint on without totally wrecking this paper underneath. It has wrinkled up. I'm hoping that will settle. And you can still see, despite the, the layer of watercolour ground and the two layers of gouache you can still see that original line work or not line work uh, the original details of the of the photo print underneath so that's good now do i want to make her little socks red as well oh, they would be white wouldn't they probably or gray they kind of look gray there and probably these bluebell stems i will use some of that kind of muted green from the graphite tint set so they look kind of like they do look like they're green, but I don't want them to look really vibrant. Once she's holding them, I want them to look like they're, they're pretty much dead. Some of these around here, I might put some pops of blue. <laughs> this is going really, it's, it, it's, it's um, kind of going a bit away from the ghost trend. <laughs> I kind of do my own thing with it a little bit, but that's okay, as long as I'm having fun. That is fine. So I think I ought to get the ghost in now. And what I'm thinking is that the ghost, I thought about having several ghosts kind of in the background and I might still have some smaller ones in the background, but I want one ghost here, sort of almost leaning over her with it as if, as if it's got its ghostly arm around her, kind of almost as if maybe it is her mum, you know? <laughs> Who knows what the story behind this is. <laughs> so I'm going to use white gouache to just sketch out roughly where that ghost is going to go let it be sort of semi-transparent and have the branches here sort of showing through the ghost as they would. Let's go for this zinc white first because I think I think this is a bit more transparent than, than the titanium. I if I should sort of draw myself a shape first. We should really. So this has got to look more like the cartoony shape um, ghost so I don't go completely away from what I'm meant to be doing. I want it to be taller than her, possibly possibly hovering partly above the ground and extending out that way. As if it's almost got a protective arm around her. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Let's see how that goes. All right, just let that first layer of those dry. And start doing a bit of um, work on the background here. Now, if we were really picking bluebells, it would be springtime. It definitely does allow the paint to sort of travel over the surface of the paper in a way it never would with this paper otherwise. I think that's about this is the kind of fit I want. Just a just a suggestion of there being greenery there. 
sort of earth underfoot, you know, just just a sort of a wash of, of colour really. So the ghosts and the little girl, who's really also a ghost, <laughs> will look more ghostly in comparison. quite like the way that as the gouache has dried there, the white gouache, it's become more transparent and allowing the branches to shine through. But I think I'm going to just strengthen up the white just around the edges at the top here and let it just fade away down here. And the same with this one. I still need to put the little the little black eyes in as well to, <laughs> to give that ghosty sheet effect. And then just to get the effect of it being almost like a sheet draped over, I want to have like f an implication of kind of folds in it. I'm just exaggerating the, the highlights that are already there on the little girl's face now. Well, now I'm going to exaggerate the dark bits in the little girl's face. Let's see what that does. <laughs> I have to do this with uh, pencils, I think, to get the detail I want. This will just give me a basis. Sort of, sort of wondering whether to try a bit of blondish hair. That's my best colour for blondish. Hmm, russet. Yeah, just a suggestion of it, I quite like that. Got the tiniest bit of black now. And I've got to do the eyes. Mm, let's pencil them in first, shall we? There we go, that's that. I like the idea as it it looks a bit like there's someone dressed up as as a ghost because you can even see like the noses under there. <laughs> but having said that, they are transparent, so Just be patient and let that dry a minute. I think I'm pretty much done with this. <laughs> it's got to be one of the quickest pieces I've done in a while. I think I am going to go, I'm going to get myself a dark coloured pencil and just pick up her features a little bit but I don't want to go too mad because I quite like how it looks at the moment. I'm just going to use up these last bits of paint. Save wasting them. There we go. <laughs> I'm just going to deepen up her eyes a little bit. I thought about making in her into a real little skull face, you know, but I don't, I think I've decided I don't want to be that obvious. <laughs> I'll just sink her eyes in a little bit. Basically all I'm doing is highlighting what's already there, actually. Sorry, little girl, but you did already look a little bit creepy. Sweet, but creepily sweet. Yeah, I think that's enough. I don't want to do too much more. Now, do I want to just slightly... Pick up the details in the coat just a little bit. 
and her little fingers. There, I'm pretty much done except for I just want to um, put Happy Halloween there and I think the easiest way is going to be just stick a bit of paper over it. There, I made it look a bit more deliberately childlike there. Okay. And I'll just go there. Yep, I think I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Maybe I'll stop fiddling. Well, um, so the next thing is to um, join up with, I'm doing this the, the, a couple of days before. The next thing is to join up on screen with Zoe and see what she's done. I've already seen her here we go. This is Zoe sent this to me in Discord. This is a lovely scene. She, she, that was a really good find. I'm dying to see what she does with that. Lots of scope there. Beautiful. It's the kind of thing I was hoping to find, but I just couldn't. I couldn't find anything much in my local charity shops. And um, but yeah, itching to see what Zoe's done with that. So the next thing is I'll be going over to share my screen with Zoe. Watch this space. Any second now for you. I've got to wait a couple of days. <laughs> So we've we've come over to say hello to Zoe now. Hello, Zoe. Hi. <laughs> Zoe so, Zoe's got me on her screen, and I've got Zoe on my screen. Well, we've got our desks. <laughs> we can only see our desks. Our disembodied hands. And I am so excited to see what Zoe's is going to turn out like. So oh. we're recording this after our, after we finish both our pieces, and I will have just shown on my video. I will have just shown a picture of how Zoe's painting was before she started messing with it and I'm so excited to see how it's turned out so who's going to turn over first I think you should I think you should yeah okay drum roll Are you ready yes I'm very ready oh wow that is amazing I don't want to show you mine now I'm sure yours oh my god that is fantastic I love the pumpkins as well this is the thing, you know, we were saying earlier that I had issues with that they look fine in real life, but on camera they look like they're floating above the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's difficult on camera sometimes, isn't it? Make, can you, do you need to, like, give them a shadow or something to make them see? Yeah, I might, I might yeah. give them a shadow later. Yeah. yeah. The trouble is this card that this, this print has been done on yeah. is a bit rubbish. Like, I did this, this is... Is it Posca? It's a little bit of Posca, and I think I used um, oh, what they call the Pilot Pinta, and yeah. they weren't happy about going on this card at all. Ah, uh, um, yeah. yeah. Even though they're supposed to go on any surface. Yeah. Oh. I love Whatever's that. coated it in, they weren't happy about it, but I got there in the end. <laughs> I love the way they're going off into the distance there as well. It's brilliant. Yeah, all about, and all staring at you as well. Yeah. Did you do anything to the tree? Is that tree, you've added that tree in? I've added the tree, yeah. yeah. I've yeah, only so the just... tree goes to the pumpkins. It just all merges it. It goes, that looks like it was almost part of the original painting, but it's a bit better than the original yeah. painting. It was a bit boring, that painting. Yeah. yeah, that is fantastic. I love it. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, okay. It's your got, turn now. I can't even feel mine now. I've still got a little... I've decided to go back in and do a little bit of something to mine, so it's not quite finished after all. I'm afraid yeah. to turn it over now. I've gone all self-conscious. Oh, okay. It's going to be amazing. I know it is. It isn't. It isn't. <laughs> I actually don't know what to oh. say. She's gone quiet. <laughs> No, I love it. <laughs> now, I'm, what I'm going to do is, I've put, just take that off because I'm going to do black ink. Oh, yeah. Around the edges to darken it all up a bit. And then I'll do, yes. then I'll peel the tape off. So yeah. now, now I've done the reveal, I can start doing that. Do that, yeah, while we're talking. Because I use this, um, have you seen this stuff? Got, no, what's that? Well, it's, it's meant to, it, it makes like a like a surface that's suitable for watercolours and gouache oh. onto anything like wood, card, any, um, paper, anything like that. Oh, that and this was good. really cheap rubbish paper. You can see how thin it was. Yeah. But I wanted to use watercolour and gouache on here. So mm. I did a, a coat of this. What I forgot was this isn't the transparent one. It's the white one. So you can see it's given this white misty effect everywhere. Yeah, I like that though. And then I use these out kind of over the top to give a bit of colour because this yeah. was all black and white. Looks really good yeah. though. I really like how you, because mine are really much like I didn't want them, I didn't want to go for, I was trying to look like it was like another ash, like a different plane. Yeah, 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas yours look more like they're in the world. Set of the into girl. the. Yeah. 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 Whereas mine look like it is like a separate plane of existence almost. Which yeah. Is kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I kind of wanted the girl to look a bit like maybe she's a ghost herself. And really, yes. I, I've gone away a little bit from the, the general thing of this trend, haven't I? Because, like, you shouldn't really have a little... I Like, I've spookified her face a little bit and that. Yeah. But really, it should be more... Like, the almost cartoony ghost, isn't it, really? Yeah. You can do what you want, can't you? Yeah, really? it's my picture. In the and end, it's... I thought, she's got such a spooky little face. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry little girl. She's probably long dead now because that was quite an old looking photo. It does look like an old photo, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think it's amazing. Oh, that's better with a bit of dark around it, I think. Yeah, it's like the, uh, I forget what it's called now, but you have like the dark red drow photographs. The, um, I couldn't remember, Tom reminded me, it's vignette. That's the one, yeah. So I get to yeah. do a take. Oh, look, I've just, I'm such a prat. Look, I've gone over the. Oh, you could trim that. I you? can <laughs> trim it. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> I just said Pratt on your video, sorry. Oh, that's all right. You can, you can <laughs> yeah. edit me out. I tell you, it's really fun to do this, though, wasn't it? It is a fun it is a fun thing, yeah. Yeah, and pretty quick. I mean, anybody could have a go at it. Oh, I don't know. Mine took me ages. Did it? Yeah, like I... an hour and a half. And it doesn't... It's like, what did I do in an hour and a half? But it was just because I've had, I literally had to... Every time I put paint down, I had to dry it. And then layer um, up and... Yeah, because it it just uh, like the they didn't want to go on properly. They were staying quite translucent, so yeah, yeah it was several layers. And then I did use a bit of coloured pencil on top as well. But you've got to bear in mind though, Zoe. For you, you're saying an hour and a half is a long time. That's a long time for me. Yeah, for for me, <laughs> that's pretty quick. You know. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm extremely slow working. What whatever it is, I'm always slow. That's yeah. better. That's better. I might still do a bit of coloured pencil over. I've got yeah. another. Um, a big painting I've been saving for I've had it for several years and it's gone all faded it's like a sea scene with these people in the front in a boat and it reminds me a bit of Cornwall and I, I it's gone all faded and I was going to chuck it and then I thought oh, I could, re could do something I yeah. could repaint that and so it's made yeah. me think about that again I could put like a I've always thought I'd put mermaids or sea monster or something in the background because there's Absolutely. this choppy sea so I might try it again would you do it again and do you know it... what I was? I was just thinking when I was doing this that it would be a nice thing to try and do maybe every October. Yeah, yeah. Make it make it a tradition for the thirty first. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I'll just have a look whenever I pass a charity shop. Now, I'll just have a look inside and see what I can find. Yeah, when and when I'll keep it when half the world isn't also looking for <laughs> exactly because <laughs> it was really hard to find something suitable, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I went to five, must have been five shops I went into or something. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And I did record some of that, but I was getting did progressively you? more annoyed. So you've got a bit of vlog, almost like a vlog kind of thing going on. Well, no, I've discarded that footage because I was getting oh. more and more annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, I'm getting flustered and rushing around all these horrible shops. Horrible, smelly shops. <laughs> yeah, because they are a bit, aren't they? I yeah. just realised Tom's making a straight and I thought, oh, why is he not laughing at what we're saying? and I realised he can't hear what we're saying. He can't can he? hear. Yeah. 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 It's our headphones work. Uh, public, public thank you to Tom for helping us do this because we couldn't yes. have worked it out by ourselves. Yes, thank you <laughs> to our tech genius because, yeah, we wouldn't have had a clue how to do no. this bit, would we? Oh, no. I do no. love that, Zoe. I think that is brilliant. Yeah, I really good do. Fun, wasn't it? Love I love it. yours as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's all we need to do, isn't it? To say bye to everyone and then yeah. we can just carry on talking afterwards. <laughs> So Bye thanks for watching day. everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you again soon. <laughs>